All right, here we go. Let's work this problem out. See how many steps it takes us. First step is to plug everything in. Uh, on my paper, I would say 17 equals the square root of parentheses negative 3 minus 5, parentheses squared, plus b minus 7, parentheses squared. Okay? Just like that. All I did was plug it in, step number one. Step number two is to do what to both sides? <coughs> square both sides. You square the 17, you square all of this, and that square and the square root cancel out. So I get 289 equals... Uh, this just works out to be negative 8 squared, if I'm not mistaken, and 64 uh, plus b minus 7 squared. Is that right? Yes. Did I do that right? Okay, so you squared both sides, and you figured out what this stuff squared would be. That's not too hard. That's two steps at one time. Now, what do I do with the 64? Okay. Move it over by subtraction. Okay, I'm going to write b minus 7 squared over here on the left, and I'm going to write 225 over there on the right. Okay, 289 minus 64 is 225, I'm not mistaken. Okay, now what are you going to do to both sides? In order to get rid of the square, what are you going to do? Square root both sides. So I square root the left, I square root the right, I get B minus 7 is equal to how much? Plus or minus how much? 15. Is it nice that 225 is a perfect square? Yeah, it makes life a lot easier, right? If it was 2, 2, 4, then you would have a radical answer, and that would make that problem a lot harder. But it's not so bad when it's a perfect square. Are we done here? Do we know what B is? What do we need to do to both sides? Add 7, sorry. Add 7 to both sides. Add 7 to both sides, and I get B equals 22 or what? Negative 8. That's right. 22 and negative 8. Anybody not know how I got 22 and negative 8 on the last step? All right. What I did was I said b minus 7 is equal to plus or minus 15. You with me to there? Okay. I added 7 to both sides. So I said 15 plus 7, and I said negative 15 plus 7. I did the positive scenario, and I did the negative scenario. This answer gives me 22. This answer gives me negative 8. Got to add 7. I don't know. I, I think you subtracted 7. You have to add 7 to both sides. Yes? As soon as we get done, you might be able to sit right here. Might be a little closer. Let me, let me get done filming this. Any questions on this problem? Do you think you're going to have more of these or more of the easier ones? More. more of these, right? These require more thought. There's more thought involved rather than just plugging it in the formula or plug it in your calculator. Okay, these are better problems. Okay, if I give you the distance and one point, can you find the other point? Yes. Okay, I hope so. Alright, so here we go. Moving on to midpoint, right, distance and midpoint. We have a formula for midpoint and it looks fairly involved. Right, it's got x2s and y2s and all that good stuff. Midpoint equals parentheses. Uh, x2 plus x1 over 2, and y2 plus y1 over 2, parentheses. Makes no difference which order you put them in up, up top there. If you had to say this formula in your own words, right, if you had to pick a way of saying it to remember it, how would you say it? Anybody? What are you doing to the x's? You're adding them up, and what are you doing? Divide by, two. divide by two. Write that down. Add up your x's and divide by two. That's how I would remember this formula. To find the midpoint, remember what we're doing, right? You have an endpoint and an endpoint, and we're trying to find the midpoint, right? In order to find the midpoint, you simply add up your x's, divide by two. Add up your y's, divide by two. It's that easy. It really is. Okay? Yes? Let me do an example. I think that'll help. Uh, 6, 3, and 4, 5. 6, 3, and 4, 5. These are two points, and the directions say find the midpoint. Well, 
you know that it's going to have an X and a Y, right? Always know that the midpoint will be an X and Y. Some people mess up sometimes and they give me midpoint and they only tell me one, you know, like the midpoint's five. Well, guys, the midpoint will always have an X and a Y. So don't make that mistake. To find the X, we simply say 6 plus 4 divided by 2. To find the Y, we simply say 3 plus 5 divided by 2. Add up your X's, divide by 2. Add up your Y's, divide by 2. What does this give us? Five. What's 6 plus 4 divided by 2? 5. What does this give us? 4. Four. Four. So our midpoint from these two points is simply 5, 4. Is that hard? No. no. They could throw negatives in there. They could make it odd so you might get a fraction, right, like 9 over 2 or something like that. But finding midpoint is not difficult. Anybody else? Anybody else have a question? All right, let's do a few examples. Uh, let's see. Find the midpoint of 14, 3 and 6, 9. Find the midpoint of negative 11, negative 3 and 2, negative 5. I'll move in just a second. And find the midpoint of 25 and 30, negative 5. Three problems. Find the midpoint. They're over there on the right hand side. Find the midpoint of those three 